Hello and welcome to another edition of Luminar Coffee Break. I'm your host, Vanelli. Now, our topic today is on what causes digital noise and, of course, how to fix it. All right? So, digital noise, if you look, is often referred to as grain. So, if you look at um, so some of these images that are shot usually in low light with a very high ISO, it'll look pixelated. But in reality, it's digital grain, it's digital noise, all right? Now, most people equate um, digital noise or grade with a high ISO, and technically, it could be true, but how do I put this? It's a byproduct of it. And what I mean by that is this. If you were to photograph something outside in the daytime at 1600 ISO, and you have everything's all set with a proper exposure, when you take those pictures, you won't notice the, the, the grain. You won't notice the digital noise. So it's not so much the high, I, the high ISO. What it really is, is the low light, and in the shadows is where you'll see this unwanted digital noise. All right? So that's what causes it. Now, hello, guys. Welcome here from Holland. And hello, Julie. And we'll do a couple more from Italy. And my good buddy Russell from Orlando. All right, so let's dive in. Now, before I do, we've been talking about Fuji for the last several weeks, and they've been a partner of ours. And I really want to thank them tremendously for the camera gear that they're loaning me. I mean, not just myself, but some of the other members at Skylum. This is the X-T3. With a telephoto lens to 50 to 140, um, I'm going to photograph this weekend, either at a botanical, botanical garden, or um, I'm going to go out and photograph some portraits, and I'll let you know how that's coming along. They also have a couple ebooks. This one is on the 6B lights, and we talked last week about the portrait ebook that they came out with. And one last thing, they like to give us this message in this time for us. To stay at home, stay safe, and be creative. Great. All right, so let's jump right in. Now, these right here are from um, shots I took uh, at a concert. This the band called the Far East Movement. Now, um, most of you remember their, their one hit song was uh, Fly Like a G6. So, when you're doing concert photography like this, you can't help but have high, high ISO. So this right here, I'm going to look at the info panel. And if you notice, I'm shooting at 1600. 1600 ISO, and the shutter speed ranged from 1, 160th of a second, so I saw a couple of them at 250th of a second. So I was really at a low shutter speed. And then, depending on where I was, that ranged between 70 to 200, of course. All right? Now, a couple of things. In the beginning, let me go to the very top. All right. Almost there. Here we go. Okay, good. These are circus performers. All right. So, what I was trying to do was find pockets of light, because if I could find the pockets of light, then this wouldn't happen. So you see how they're completely in the shadows? There's no light whatsoever. But if you look, here's a light back there, but I didn't get him or I didn't position myself to put him in that light. Ah, here I did. Look at the difference. You see how he's in He's in that pocket of light, all right? Again, over here, there's no light. And, and I'm not quite sure if it was me getting into the groove or it was the lighting crew towards the end of the show, they really started nailing it. So let's show you some of my favorites. Here's my absolute favorite one. So you see how I got him into the light coming down on him, all right? So... Let's begin with this edit here. Now, I talked about this earlier this morning, and there's a difference in philosophy, okay? 
I prefer to do my denoising at the end of my edit, not in the beginning. Some like to do it right away. I like to do it towards the end. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the reason for that is some of the tools I'm going to be using may already take away some of that noise. They may blend it in a little bit more, or they may even add to the noise. I know if I try to bump up the shadows, you'll definitely see digital noise in these images. So I like to keep that towards the end. And it's, again, something that I prefer, me personally, I prefer to do. So what I did for this one is I started out just with a simple look, AI Enhancer, just to see what Luminar saw, okay? Now again, it went out, it actually did a really good job on it. And I don't see too much noise, it's a little bit, but not a whole lot, all right? Um, I don't like the shadows, too much of the shadows. So I know under light, yep, I bumped up the shadows here. So let's bring the shadows down. And now you notice how that's enriching the blacks. Good, but at the same time, it's going to make him a little bit darker. All right, so we can decide. I like it right about here. All right. Um, I still, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I still prefer this area back here to be darker and more light to be drawn, drawn on him, okay? So if that's the case... What we're going to do is come down to the vignette tool, choose the him as a subject, let's dial it back, good, but the difference this time is, let's oh, look at that, we're going to apply inner light, there we go, look at that, all right, so let's see the effect it has, before, and after. Oh, I liked it a lot. So, I mean, can you see? Can you see we're drawing the attention right to his face? All right? Now, that we have this set from here, beginning and end, let's come down to the Pro Tools. And I want to try the advanced contrast. Here's the highlights. Notice it's not affecting him too much, but it's affecting around him. Good. I think mid-tones are going to be... There it is. Yeah, look, look, look what mid-tones are doing. But it's a little too much on him. There we go. And of course, shadows are either going to lift it or enrich them. Let's make them darker. All right. Now let's see if there's any changes. You know, just minor change, but enough to make a difference. All right, so before and not after. This. All right, so far that's looking really good. Now, while I'm here, let's go to the essential tools. Now let's apply that denoise, all right? So now let's do that denoise. Now, with this denoise, let's go over here to the help menu. And user value. Let's see what the denoise is actually doing for us. One moment. There we go. And here's denoise. I spell it wrong? Yep, I did. <laughs> denoise. There we go. So here's the denoise tool. Luminosity denoise removes the gray noise from an image. Removes the gray noise, usually in the shadows. The color denoise removes the color noise from, from the image itself. So now that we know what the luminosity one is doing and the color one is doing, check out Boost. And what Boost is doing is going to increase the aggressiveness of the denoise. So we're here. So I'm going to crank up. So if there's any grays with the noise, I'm fixing it. And then any color noise. We well, said I just made that a little sharper, not sharper, but um, softer before, after. With a 
process. There it is. So you may not notice it too much, but that noise is actually making it look cleaner. Yeah, let me get to the, get to the screen. Yeah, before and after. Now, what I'd like to do at this point is come down here, and we'll save it as a new look, and we'll give it a name like I did earlier, uh, Far East Movement. Version, let's say, 3. So, if I come down to my user looks collection, Far East Movement, all of them are right here. So from the earlier ones I did in the morning, let's see this one. This is the very first one I did. I would darken it, which I did the second time out. Yep, oh, there it is, the third time. I like the third one the best. All right. So now that I have that set, what I want to see is how well it will be applied, let's say, to this image. All right? It's not identical, so the image isn't identical, but the concept of it is, so let's see what it does. I'm going to apply the Far East Movement. And boom. Ooh, look at this. I like this here. I don't want that. We're going to fix too much of this image needed to be repaired before I can apply this. So let's just come down here. And I have a feeling I crank this back a little. I saw my back problem. And if I put the highlights and brought them way down, that's going to solve some of my problems. But I'm looking at it close, and honestly, probably about a half a stop too dark, or too bright. There. Now it's even more, more of the, the texture and tone in his skin. Good. All right, so far it looks great. And you know what? Let's experiment with the structure tool, AI structure. See what that does. Oh, that can be way too much structure in the background. So I'm going to dial it back, maybe smooth it a little bit. Yeah, I think I like it better smooth. All right. Four and after. Not that we give a change, but again, little changes all add up. All right. And one last one. Let me do the ace of the, the base. Good. I'm going to check to make sure I got the original image, which I do. Now, just so you know, these shots were photographed with a Nikon D70, 700. A Nikon D700, the one I normally use when I, I'm shooting sports, it's a very, very old camera. But man, does it still work. So don't say, well, my camera has too much noise. It's not the greatest. You can make it the greatest. Just make sure you get the shot, put them in light. All right? So, now that we have that set, um, let's see. Uh, same thing. I want to start out with one of these that we created. Ooh, look at that. I don't have to stick with it. Good. Or I could just come over here and say, you know what? This image here, let's see what it would look like um, if we had a little mood to it. Ooh, not bad at all. And then, um, you know what? Yeah, let's, let's check out some, some of the dramatic stuff. And, yeah. Uh, these really didn't look that great. Oh, actually, I like this. You know what? I like this a lot. There's just too much film grain. Sure enough. So let's back off the film grain. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. So, again, all I had to do... I hate saying that word, so I shouldn't have said that. I hate when someone says to me, all you have to do 
is this. No, what I should say is to get a jump on this, start with one of the, the looks. Just start with any look and see what that look does to that image. If it gets you 90% of the way there, heck, if it gets you 80% of the way there, leave that look and then go back at it. All right? So let's go up to the noise. See, I have a feeling you didn't add it. I'm going to crank this all the way up. It's processing, which you can see. And there it is. Without it. With it. Uh, the noise is one of those filters that you can't live without, but at the same time, you don't always you don't always rely on it. But if you're shooting anything over, let's say 800 ISO, depending on which camera, just run it through the denoise and see what it does. So, four and after, look at that. Great. All right, guys. Hey, do me a huge favor. Up on the top there, where there's the, the like button. Please don't forget to click the like button. That helps us out tremendously. And of course, uh, share this link to your friends so they can uh, come on to the live show, watch it, and ask questions. All right? Well, guys, thank you so much. If you have questions or if there's something you want me to do you know, or demonstrate, please leave them in the comments below or reach out to me at vanelli at skylum.com, V-A-N-E-L-L-I, at Skylum.com, reach out to me, introduce yourself, and then write out what you think may be a good idea for one of the classes. All right? Guys, thanks again. You have a great day.